Hey there everyone, Ramesh here. In this video, I am going to share a few tips to become a good Java developer. Well, this is the article that recently I have created and published on my website. And I am going to take this blog post as a presentation for this video. Alright. If you are Java beginner and wanted to become a good Java developer, then I highly suggest you guys to follow these tips. Good understanding of OOPS concepts, OOPS principles and design patterns. Let's go one by one. OOPS concepts. For Java developer, having a strong understanding of object-oriented programming is must. Without having a strong foundation on OOPS concepts, one can't realize the beauty of object-oriented programming language like Java. If you don't have a good idea of what OOPS is, even though you are using OOPS language, you may be still coding in a procedural way. Well, in Java, everything is an object right and having a strong knowledge on oops concepts is very essential for java developer if you attend any interview java interviews you will get a question on oops concepts first right well just studying oops concept definitions won't help much we should know how to apply those oops concepts in designing a solution in object oriented way all right so studying oops concepts in theoretical won't help much you should know how to apply oops concepts in designing a solution in object oriented programming way so for you guys i have listed here a few basic and advanced oops concepts if you are java beginner and if you want to uh, you know have a strong foundation in oops concepts then i highly suggest you guys to go through these all basic and advanced oops concepts like object class abstraction encapsulation inheritance polymorphism composition aggregation association cohesion coiling and delegation so i have written an article on each of these oops concept with an example so you guys can check out uh, one by one so next is oops principles it's important to learn the basic object oriented programming concepts like abstraction encapsulation polymorphism inheritance and all other advanced oops concepts but it's equally important to know object oriented design principles to create a clean and modular design software so these guidelines help design strong object oriented software design well here i have listed a few oops principles that i follow day to day project work encapsulate what varies code to an interface rather than to an implementation delegation principle and don't repeat yourself principle and these are the solid principle single responsibility principle open close principle list code substitution principle interface segregation principle and dependency principle well these are the very important oops principles uh, you can have a look into all right i have written article on solid principles you guys can check it out next is design patterns design patterns are very popular among software developers and design pattern is a well described solution to a common software problem well if you are a software developer and if you want to develop a software then you have to know about a well known design patterns well if you are java beginner and don't know what are the design patterns you need to learn so look at here i have written a lot of articles on java design patterns so if you want to know gang of four design patterns then check it out i have written articles on all the gang of four design patterns here and I have also written articles on core Java W patterns. I have provided a link over here. You guys can check it out. And I have also written a few uh, articles on enterprise architecture, enterprise application architecture design patterns. Well, these are the commonly used design patterns in Java development. So I have written an article on all of them. So you guys can check it out. All right. All right, guys. Having a good understanding of OOPS concepts, OOPS principles and design patterns is very essential for Java developer. And if you are a beginner and wanted to become a good Java developer, then please have a look into these OOPS concepts, OOPS principles and design patterns. So next is learn Spring framework. Well, if you are a Java, if you are from Java background, then you must heard about Spring framework, right? So Spring Framework is one of the essential skills for Java developer. 
and Spring Framework is the most popular and widely used Java framework for developing enterprise applications. So having Spring Framework skills are really useful for Java developers to get a job. And Spring Boot is a basically an extension of Spring Framework which eliminate the boilerplate configurations required for setting up a Spring based application. Spring Boot has taken a Spring Framework to the next level. It has drastically reduced the configuration and setup time required for Spring based projects. Spring Boot is getting more popularity especially for developing RESTful web services and microservices. So if you are Java developer and if you don't uh, have a knowledge on Spring or Spring Boot, I highly recommend you guys to learn Spring Boot because Spring Boot is highly demanding skill for Java developer right now. So you can use Spring Boot to set up a Spring based project with almost zero configuration and start building the things that actually matter to your application. Alright, and if you are new to Spring Boot and wanted to get started with it quickly, then check it out my Spring Boot tutorial here. I have written around 120 plus articles, tutorials, guides on Spring Boot. You can have a look into it. And I have already published around uh, 80 plus videos on Spring Boot on this YouTube channel. You guys can check it out. So having a knowledge and having a strong hands-on experience on Spring Framework is very essential for Java developer. Next is master the core Java APIs. We always use common core Java APIs in our day-to-day -day Java development and mastering in commonly used core APIs will boost your productivity and save your time right if you make a commonly used Java APIs handy then obviously it will increase your productivity and it will obviously save your time right it doesn't matter how strong you are in terms of theoretical knowledge if you don't have the language construct and core APIs in case of Java one should have very strong hands-on experience on core Java APIs like uh, the important classes in package java.long, io classes and apis, exception classes and apis, collections, generics, threads, jdbc will become a strong java developer. So if you have a strong hands-on experience on these concepts then obviously you will become outstanding java developer. Alright so I have written a lot of uh, guides on java commonly use java class apis i have provided a link over here so look at here i have written a lot of guides on commonly used core java class apis for example this is object class and this is a guide for object class apis string class apis string builder string buffer thread and wrapper classes and thread thread local thread group all right and here you can see the, a few of the collection class apis that is array list, arrays, collections. I have written a lot of guides on commonly used core Java class APIs. So you guys can just check it out. I'm damn sure that if you go through these guides, you will get a hands-on experience on core Java APIs. Okay, great. Next is learn microservices. Nowadays, microservices is the hot buzzword in software development and many organizations prefer building their enterprise applications using microservices architecture right and it's very uh, essential skill uh, for java developers to uh, learn about microservices okay and in java community spring boot is the widely used framework for building both monolithics and microservices spring framework provides a spring cloud and spring boot which greatly simplify the microservices development in java in Java community, Spring Boot and Spring Cloud is widely used uh, for developing microservice based enterprise applications. And if you are a Java beginner and wanted to learn microservices in Java, then you, you should check it out Spring Boot and Spring Cloud to build a microservices project in Java. Next is read open source frameworks and library source code. Well, this is the my, one of the favorite tips that I always follow. Whenever I will get a chance, I always go through the popular open source frameworks and libraries on GitHub. So whenever you will get a free time, then read the source code of various successful popular Java, Java W frameworks, popular library projects. 
For example, you can check out a popular open source frameworks and libraries on GitHub such as Spring Framework, Hibernate, Apache, Langs Library, Commons IO Library and Commons Collections etc. So there are a lot of popular libraries and frameworks available on GitHub and all of them are open source so you can go ahead and you can check out the source code of all these popular frameworks. A good Java developer will learn how to use framework but if you want to be an outstand, outstanding Java developer then you should study the source code of various successful popular frameworks where you can see the internal working mechanism of the framework and lot of best practices. It will help a lot in using frameworks in very effective way. And a popular frameworks uh, where always follow uh, the best practices and design patterns. So if you read the source code, you will also able to learn about uh, different design patterns and best practices. Okay. Next is learn Java release features. So you should familiar with new features introduced in Java 8 such as Lambda expressions, functional interfaces, method references, stream APIs, optional collectors, string joiner and static and default methods in interface. So along with these features, you should also learn every new Java release features and keep yourself up to date. Alright, so learning a new uh, Java release feature is very essential for Java developer. Okay, so you can go through each release of java and uh, you know keep yourself up to date about java next is keep commonly used code snippets or utilities handy over time you may need to write or copy paste the same piece of code or configuration again and again so keeping those kinds of configuration snippets like logging jdbc configuration utilities like string utilities file utilities date utilities reflection db utilities will be more helpful so i always keep all these uh, you know repeatedly use configurations and utilities handy and here are the few benefits of keeping repeatedly use code snippets or utilities like obviously you will save your time and you can share these commonly used uh, snippets with your team members so that uh, they also save their time and you can write a blog post and share these repeatedly use uh, Code across the globe and you can host them on github as well so I always do uh, these uh, you know things and uh, here I Obtain keep commonly used code snippets or utilities handy. So I have written few of the articles uh, here so you, you guys can check it out for example, here I have written like 18 useful collections utility methods. So these are the very useful utility methods in case of collection and 27 useful string utility methods. So these are the commonly used string utility methods. Uh, uh, you can just check it out and reflection, file, zip, date. All right. So these are the very commonly used, uh, you know, utilities in Java development. So I have written an article on them. You can check it out. Next is write blog posts, articles, tutorials on different technologies. So in day to day project work, you may use new technologies, libraries, best coding practices, design patterns, you know, artificial design patterns, etc. So keep documenting those thoughts or blog it and share across the community. So this is one of my favorite tips. Whenever I will learn new technologies, libraries or any coding practice, I immediately document them or uh, immediately I will create a blog post on them and I will share uh, across the globe okay so on this website I have written around 1500 plus articles tutorials and guides and I have published on this website and I have shared across the globe so in this way you guys can write a post or article or tutorial on different technologies that you will learn day by day Imagine you solved a wild problem that occurred while doing a simple POC and you blogged about it. Maybe some developer elsewhere in the world is facing the same issue on the production deployed application and think about how important that solution for the developer. So blog your thoughts, they might be helpful for others or to yourself in future. Blogging and sharing your thoughts via blog leads to have lots of benefits, help others to learn you can revise it later in future, improve written English, 
you can earn money from it if you if your blog website has good traffic and you will obviously get a job opportunities so these are the uh, you know benefits that uh, i i will get whenever i you know uh, publish articles and uh, share it across the globe next is no different software development methodologies so having a good understanding of software development methodologies is very essential for essential for java developer so be familiar with various kinds of methodologies like agile scrum waterfall etc so nowadays choosing the development methodology is depending on the client some clients are preferring agile and some clients are happy with the waterfall model so having an idea on various methodology would be great nowadays i can see that most companies are using agile development methodologies so learn agile methodologies and skills to improve productivity on it next tip is follow great developers communities and forums you can follow great developers on twitter i am following a lot of awesome developers on twitter so you can check it out my following list on twitter here is a link and you can subscribe to forums for issues and uh, solutions so you can check out one of the popular uh, you know forum or community that is stack overflow you can follow great java communities on social platforms so you can follow me on uh, facebook i have created a lot of java communities on facebook as well as on twitter you can follow me on social media you will definitely uh, you know get a refer reference of java communities last but not in the list the last tip is tools so having a hands-on experience on these commonly used tools for java project development is very essential for java developers so here are the project build tools like marvin and gradle so these are the project build and dependency management tools and version control software tools like git svn cvs etc and id like eclipse and inklij so just have a hands-on experience on these tools so that you will increase your productivity whenever you work on java projects all right guys so these are the tips that uh, i follow so i thought i could share with you guys i hope you uh, you will find this video and tips useful thanks guys for watching i will see you guys in next one